Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of my podcast, The Embodied Blonde Show. I'm so excited to be here today with Mystic Eve. Mystic Eve is the founder of the Center of Mystic Arts. She's a space holder for artists, mystics, lovers, and seekers to co-create. She is also the owner of Mystic Eve Tattoos, and she works with astrology, tarot, and shamanic intuition to create custom tattoos supercharged with symbolism and healing energy. Thank you so much for being here, Eve. I'm so excited. Thank you so much. And I wanted to say I'm so grateful to be here. And when I first started fishing through the internet to figure out who I'm going to network with, you were one of the first. Oh, you're my first. (laughs) And I reached... (laughs) I reached out to you and I mean, I love all of your content. I really resonate with everything that you have to say. And yeah, I'm just so grateful to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to have you and we've been plan- planning this conversation for quite some time now. So yeah. it's exciting that we finally get to have it. <laughs> yes, here we are. Here we are. So. <laughs> I'd love for, first of all, for you to just share with us kind of a little bit about your backstory and how you got into what you do today and kind of what that Mm. journey has been like. Mm. Well, it's a long one, but I have practiced telling it really quickly. (laughs) (laughs) Because, you know, people's attention spans, but I've also got it all written down as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've, I've always been connected from 14 years old. I've been writing spiritual journals. I've been doing tarot. I've been spending more time in the woods with people. I'm very, very highly sensitive. I've always studied esoteric arts and always been into all that stuff. Right. And, um, and through my long journey, I ended up in Costa Rica because I had a baby Mm -hmm. that will change everything. (laughs) So I'm here, I was in the United States and I had this child and I was like, I got to get out. Like my guides were so strong. They were like, this is holy. You need to leave and go to the jungle. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) So I ended up there and dove deep into my practices, meditation, back into the tarot, back into my divine sources, back into, okay, I'm focusing on you. I'm focusing. I'm focused. You know, I'm not busying my mind with this and that and this and that and all of that stuff. So once I became focused, it was super clear Mm -hmm. and I ended up where I needed to be um, and just opened my home for other people. Cause yeah. that's what it was. It was literally, <laughs> it was the mantra. If you build it, they will come, you know, from that movie. Yeah. <laughs> I love that movie. And I'm like, okay, okay. So I did, I just started inviting people into the, into my home, healers, mystics, travelers from all over the world. There was so much healing and beautiful magic going on. And now it's been I mean, my daughter is eight years old now, so <laughs> and we, we really found Coma when she was a year and a half, two years old. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. amazing. And so amazing. where is that center located? It's in, in Costa Rica okay. on the Guanacaste Peninsula on the um, western side of the peninsula. Beautiful. So near when, Nasara, Nasara is the most well-known. When you're not there, because you're in Colorado right now, right? I, I am. So do you have people who run it for you while you're away? Uh, that is a really, yes, yes. It's mm-hmm. been a journey because I have to leave like every 60, no, 90. Every 90 days I have to leave for my passport. Oh. Um, and throughout the years, I've had many, many amazing house sitters and people that take care of, of the space. Yeah. But as life goes, I have also had many, not many. Okay. Be honest. I've had a few really, really horrible, um, house sitters that have ended up like, you know, just, just yeah. life. I, mean, I don't say horrible. Life <laughs> happens. 
bless them. It just happened the way it happened. Right. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, nobody's at coma at the moment. Mm -hmm. It is, I feel like it's in this dormant stage because it just passed through an energy. Oh, so coma is an egregore. Do you know what that means? No, tell us. Okay. <laughs> it sounds cool. So it's basically, it's really simple when you put it into energy, right? If you put energy into this pin, right? It's your favorite pin. Yeah. yeah, it's your favorite pin. Mm -hmm. If you put energy into it, it's going to hold and retain that energy. Yeah. Right. So if you put energy into a, an entity in your mind, like this idea, mm -hmm. your business, for instance, mm -hmm. right, yeah. you're going to grow the business. It's going to, the energy is going to form an entity. Mm -hmm. So and when you do it magically, you just take more focus on it. You just do more rituals, you know, you do more offerings and prayers, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That's really cool. So you're just kind of letting it take its time and what take whatever form it's meant to take. And always, always anything magical is going to be organic. Yeah. If you force anything, you're going to hit a wall. <laughs> yeah force creates force like it just doesn't that's not the way to get anything exactly. accomplished <laughs> exactly so were you guys affected by the pandemic well yes yeah I would imagine in a very amazing way so I was at coma quarantined mm -hmm. and I just sunk deep I was meditating. I mean, unless I was taking care of my kid, you know, mm -hmm. I was meditating, doing ceremonies, mm -hmm. all night ceremonies. Uh, there was one ceremony where I was stung by this gigantic scorpion and I was like tripping and it was scorpion, Scorpio full moon. And I'm just Whoa. like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's when, oh my God, that's when so many downloads came to me. And that's when I really, started i opened the channel to really communicate with these beings yeah. with the unseen beings with the yeah. with the light beings yeah amazing yeah but it was just a time for you to really go inward and connect yes it's amazing yeah i think that for all of the negative there was a lot of negative things that came out of it there were also a lot of really beautiful things uh yeah word <laughs> uh, word <laughs> oh my gosh the whole earth the whole earth was like <gasps> mm -hmm. oh my god people aren't everywhere <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know it yeah i think it was an invitation for a lot of us to slow down and to really look at our lives absolutely Realize that the hustling and the busyness and the go 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 isn't mm -hmm. necessarily giving us even the results that we want or definitely not the fulfillment that we're looking for yeah think about all of the the health nutritionalists that have just exploded on the internet yeah. everybody yep. is talking about what we should and shouldn't consume and how we should live for our bodies you know? yeah exactly yeah. yeah i think there's a lot of good that came from it yeah so can you tell me a little bit more about your ritual tattoo experiences and how I've, I have never heard anything like that. And I think it's one of the coolest things that I've, <laughs> I've ever encountered. Yeah, it's, it's actually really new for me because I have been a professional tattooist. Oh gosh, almost 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, so there's been a long time of, I've owned a shop. I've worked for other people. I've, you know, I've bounced around. Um, but the the shop atmosphere, the, the studio atmosphere mm -hmm. wasn't my vibe because I'm so sensory and I'm like, I feel all the all everybody. Yeah. And um, so when I started doing it on my own, I realized that I was able to um find my own like tattoo the people I wanted to tattoo like I like your energy 
I want to tattoo you. If I don't like your energy, I'm not going to get that close. You know, you're spending a lot of time with that person and very close with their skin. It's a very intimate process. Yeah. Um, And actually the download came during the pandemic, during the shutdown, all Mm -hmm. of this, Mm -hmm. all of it came down Yeah. and the planet started talking to me about how to incorporate all of this. It's like, Dude, it was like Tetris. It's like the shit just started making sense. <laughs> so <laughs> downloads. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's how I really started doing it. And um, so the process is I can come to your home because it's the, that's where your energy is. Yeah. I we we feel each other, we talk to each other. I can look at your birth chart. Yeah. You set an intention for your tattoo. Like, I want this tattoo to bring me health to my body or I want this tattoo to bring me monetary wealth god bless you so that we can share the wealth I want this tattoo to whatever it is you set an intention I can look at your birth chart and figure Mm -hmm. out which planets need to work with who and I'm going to give you an example because I looked at your birth chart earlier okay (laughs) okay (laughs) and the the thing that jumped out at me the most okay so first we have a party right Mm -hmm. jupiter is the planet of wealth and abundance yeah the biggest planet out there right like we know that it's wealth abundance luck it's prosperity it's growth right Mm -hmm. your jupiter is in conjunction with uranus now, Uranus is a really special planet because it's like the joke of all the planets. Like if there was a Hayoka, it would be Uranus. <laughs> right? Uh-huh. And it really is true. But Uranus at the party is the tech guy, right? Mm-hmm. So we have the boss, yeah. Jupiter. And then we've got the tech guy, the mm-hmm. guy that's going to put it on the internet. He's the planet of technology, of electricity, of of all the energy, you know, he is the one Ah. that's like the paparazzi, right? (laughs) Your boss and your Uranus are are only one degree apart from each other. So they're like, they're side by side. Mm -hmm. And they're in quintile with your son. So what this means at the party is your boss is like, taking pictures I mean all the pictures that you do yes I see it it's like look at this look at this this is a man look at this boss you are a boss you know (laughs) and you do magic with technology with this device with this ability that we can reach each other it's magical which is what the quintile aspect is yeah so if I were to put that in a tattoo I could take all of those elements put them together and create a tattoo for you that is so cool (laughs) (laughs) I don't know that much about astrology beyond like I'm an Aquarius and my sun sign right the moon is Capricorn that's about as far as I right so you're this Jupiter this boss and this tech guy are both Sagittarius which is like super focused. Well, can be, I mean, there's a swing to both sides. Sag can be all over the place, but Sag, if he's, he's in alignment, he's going to like hit the bullseye. Right. (laughs) And it goes, there's more and they're in your fifth house, which is all about creativity. And Mm -hmm. I mean, spontaneity and, and, and coming together and pulling together. It's like, Oh my God. There's so much. That's so cool. I'm going to have to schedule like a full on reading with you, get all the information. Well, what I do, because it takes so much time, right? We have every planet. Yep. We have all of the, the sinking into getting to know that planet, because what I want to do is I want you to remember what Mm -hmm. your boss, what your Jupiter looks like. I want you to meet that boss. Yeah. I take you through meditation so that you can visualize that boss mm-hmm. and you put everybody in this party atmosphere. Yeah. So you can keep it in your memory, right? 
Mm-hmm. You know where the bathroom is so you can look at your moon. You know where the boss is. You know where the party planner, the caterer. Who do you think the caterer is? I have no idea. Saturn. <laughs> Because Saturn has the rings, right? Saturn's all about restriction and responsibility and do it on time and da, da, yeah. da, 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 you yeah. know, so she's the party planner. So awesome. <laughs> so great. I love the visualization. I feel like it's really helpful. Like um, I, this isn't the same at all, but I've been doing internal family systems work with my therapist. And mm-hmm. it's cool because it's like you're, you give your parts an actual identity and then it's easier to work with them. And I feel like that's what you're describing. This goes back to creating an egregore as well. Because, and this is what humans have been doing, dare I say, from the beginning. This is how we create deities and gods. (laughs) (laughs) You know, that we personify them so that we can identify with them and get to know them better. It's not because that's what they are. Yeah. Yep. It's a way for us to work with them, to work exactly. with that energy. That, yeah. I love that. That's so cool, Eve. And um, I don't have any tattoos, but if I did, <laughs> I think 40 is a little late to start getting tattooed. I don't know. But if I did, I would be so, I'd be like, I'm flying out to Arizona right now. Yeah. <laughs> Word. So, um. When you were 14, so you said at 14, that's when you kind of started your spiritual journey. Was there something that happened that like led you to that or did it just kind of, can you? Okay. Yeah. So I have memories of way before then of recording my dreams, waking up in the middle of the night and, and what I did as a child, what I know now is meditation, right? Yeah. Um, art, all of this stuff was already in me. But mm-hmm. I remember somebody telling me, I think it was a therapist. I mean, my family has a lot of a lot of dirt in it. But I was told to get a journal at 14. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yes. Yeah. And ever since then, I have kept a spiritual journal. And it's not like an every everyday thing. It has become an everyday thing. But throughout my life, um, it's been when I know that there's something that I need to write. Yeah. So at 14, and actually I just posted on Facebook my first journal entry. It was September something, something, 1991. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I wrote everything down. Mm -hmm. And I am so grateful to my inner child. Like I, going through and publishing these journals Mm -hmm. has been my process to know who I am yeah I had to remind myself with these journals Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know who you are you know you're special (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's amazing it's amazing that at that young age you were able to start and for you does it feel like channeling from you know, source Mm. or like it comes from an internal place. It's both. Yeah. But no, I would have to say that I feel it externally. That's an interesting question. I've never really, ooh, thank you for making me think about that. Um, It's it's almost a sensory, but it, Mm -hmm. from the internal, I feel it comes from the mind. Yeah. From the external, it feels like it comes into my heart space. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I feel like it's a little, it can be a little different for everybody. And I, for me, it's different at different times, but when mm-hmm. I, I'm the most creative, it's when it's coming through me. Yeah. It doesn't even, it just feels like I'm like the conduit for whatever exactly. is coming through. Yeah, exactly. And, and there's all there's of the, sharing, like me, but mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. All of my downloads were that, you know, to clean the channel, yeah. which is cleaning your body, cleaning your thoughts, cleaning yeah. your chakras. It's all this, right? And there's so many pictures of the, the energy flow in our spines. Yeah. And once, I mean, we can clean it out with all of the elements. We've got mm-hmm. fire, burn it up with passion. We've got water 
just let our emotions understand our emotions and let them go you know all of the elements and breath so oh that's so cool so with your spiritual writing that you, you've done you've written books right and published is that like can you give us a little bit more information about that and are they published on amazon or tell yeah, us i've got the links everywhere and okay. i i don't really call them books mm -hmm. because each of them they're only about 30 or 40 pages yeah. because each of them is a separate journal that I wrote. Wow. And the way that I wrote them in the beginning, it was very clear the way I wrote them. I knew that I was going to publish them. Yeah. Um, so there's a very clear beginning and end. At the end, I go through everything. I reread the journal again and I come full circle. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is to publish them all together, but you see, there's only three of them published on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And I've got a fourth one that's coming out, but we're talking, I'm 45 years old. So we have years and years <laughs> of these journals. And I've thought to myself, I'm like, are you going to publish them all? Like, really? But I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Like, I don't know if they're all going to end up being one book, if anybody's going to even care to read them. <laughs> I think that what Elizabeth Gilbert said in the in her book, Big Magic, it's all about creativity and she's yeah. a writer, so a lot of it's about writing. And she said that like the most pure, she was like, do your art for yourself and then share it with the world. Like, don't do it for us. And so I feel like that's kind of what you're talking about here is you wrote this for you. Mm -hmm. in life. And that is what is most beneficial to other yeah. people. I feel like when I write my lessons, that's those are the ones that people resonate with. And they're like, oh my gosh, like this is what I needed to hear. Cause it's coming through and it is for me, but there's other people who need to hear it too. Versus like, if I'm trying to like intellectualize my experiences and then teach somebody something that I, you know, learned and implemented, it's a totally different energy and it just doesn't land the same way. Mm. So I feel like publishing your life lessons, that's beautiful. And there are people who are going to need that. And, you know, it's art. It's just beautiful. It is. And actually, it's funny because that leads us right into one of the other topics you were talking about, which is intuitive yoga. Yeah, I want to hear more about that. Um, so at Center of Mystic Arts, one of the things that that is a truth is that anything coming from within just like what you're saying is more powerful yeah so the magic and the ceremonies that you do are more powerful if they come from you not like oh i'm gonna read this spell book or i'm gonna mm -hmm. gonna read this book and, and do all of these instructions word for word you know what i mean or yeah. even follow this yoga instructor and do what they're doing right yeah. Well, what we do at Coma is, is I help guide people to create their own unique flow. Like what feels right to you when, what do you need to think about when and, and how, and you create a flow Yeah. and then you incorporate that into your daily life for That's your own amazing. practices. So you do one, it's a one-on-one -on -one session that then they can take and practice or do you do it as like a class <laughs> so far it's just been come hang out with me and we'll see what happens because it's interesting because my saturn is leo so you would think i would be super like structured and i do like my kitchen to be very clean and structured or i go crazy so yeah. <laughs> she my saturn likes the kitchen but when it comes to the rest of the party it's yeah. more like, let's just do what we do. Let's just hang out together. Yeah. Um, but my business and coma is asking for more structure. I'm going to have retreats that are structured that yeah. I can actually charge for. Yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. That's exciting. I think it's we do as spiritual beings and as artists, we have to find the balance between just allowing our creativity to flow and then having some structure. And I tend to err on the side of less structure also. Like I'm like, let's just see what happens. And I feel like my best work 
comes from that place. Um, but yeah. when you're trying to explain your work, I'm doing this training right now. And she was talking about bridging art and commerce. Ooh. And so it's like the comp, you have to be able to have the commerce part down. I mean, obviously without the art being what it is, there isn't much point to the commerce, but when you're trying to put your work out there, that is a piece of it. So mm -hmm. I feel like what you're saying is like having a little bit of structure to flow within can be helpful when you're trying to translate what it is that you do to like a wider audience. Absolutely. And I mean, I've got it all in my head. It's already yep. there. Yep. Totally. This part for me. Totally. Is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's putting it into the manifestation and the, the mm -hmm. flyers and the, mm -hmm. and the networking and, but which I'm, I'm, I'm nailing it now. I got it. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And I also, um, I don't know if you know, Jacqueline Shaw, but she always says, she's a coach. She's like, my work is energetic and it needs to be experienced. And she just fully owns that. And I totally respect that too. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> a lot, I think a lot of people feel that way. Like yeah. you just be able to come and experience it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not going to try to explain it to you. <laughs> well, it's funny because like, <laughs> I have to say, I'm like, the only reason why I'm even here is because my guides were like, do it. Yeah. Oh, oh. Really? <laughs> I just want to lay here on the bed and read my book and, you know, be in the jungle and play with my horses and my dogs. Yeah. And I am such a hermit that it has taken me years to be able to find myself through yeah. Uranus. What's your human, what's your human design? Do you know? Oh, generator manifester. Do you know your lines? No. Probably a line too. Line two is the hermit. <laughs> well, I know I'm also an INFJ. I am, I'm an INFP, so I'm really close to you. Okay. Yeah, so like the hermit, I'm a two four, which is the hermit. And then the two is the hermit. And then the four is like a people person. So I have a very like dual, like two sides to me. Um, but it is so tempting to just go into my little hermit mm -hmm. side and never want to come out like i'm so happy there i'm so happy <laughs> well i'm i'm like with my the way i grew up with the working at farms which is outside all the time with horses and then yeah. going into the tattoo studio it's like i could be a recluse but in my tattoo studio is like very much in my own world and you come to me and once yeah. that door rings it's like ding oh i've got customers whoosh the mask comes on and I can yeah I can do my circus show act right <laughs> yeah. but yes I do prefer to be oh, alone in the jungle with my animals of course yeah yeah and then but I feel like there's this piece also of us that's we're like, what's my purpose here? And like, mm -hmm. how I meant to serve. And then that's when we do come out of our little cave and show up. <laughs> right. It's like, you must serve these people. You have to tell them how to live. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> well, I'm really glad you decided to do that and just oh, come on <laughs> this call with me because I'm having so much fun. Um, so you are an empath. Did you always, was that something you discovered at a young age too? Or when did that come to be something that you realized and how do you, well, let's ask that question first, but then I'd also like to know about like your energetic boundaries and how you protect your energy Ooh. with being an empath. Okay. Um, well, first, yeah, I want to mention the Hayoka people um, of the Plains Native Americans, right? Like, so when I was really, really, really young, I instantly, like the first image of a Native American I saw, I was like, whoa, that's me. Like I totally identified. So yeah. I was reading all of the information that I could about Native Americans, historical fictions. I was, a, I love the library. Yeah. Actually, I'm a bit of a librarian. Like when things get loud, 
I get angry. <laughs> it's funny because I can get really loud and I'm like, oh my God. Anyway, so the point is like, I learned about the Hayoka at a young age and I, I incorporated this. I wrote that it in my journal. I think they're in my first journal actually. Yeah. I talk about the jokesters and the the coyote energy yeah. and the whole reason why we need the joke yeah to be a part of the shadow because laughter is a banishment right um and then when I was publishing my journal and realized Hayoka came up again and I re-looked into it because I was like oh, this is important and yeah. Google was all like Hayoka hey, impact. And I didn't really put those two together yeah. until Google did. Yeah. And I saw all of the memes and I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Scrolling. Yes. That's me. Yeah. That's me. Oh my God. Yeah. I knew this all along. <laughs> yeah. That is so interesting. And so it's just like a more lighthearted way of interacting with like our shadow or energy yes i wouldn't call it lighthearted though because you know sometimes you get a trick played on you that you don't like very much yeah, yeah. Like, that wasn't very nice that wasn't funny <laughs> that wasn't funny <laughs> yeah <laughs> but sometimes in life this hayoka impact can through mirrors right there's there's this whole interaction through mirrors and through like just understanding that yeah it hurts to fall down sometimes, but you know what? You can get back up. Come on, come on, come on. You got this. You got this. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Have you had to develop energetic boundaries to prevent taking on the energy of other people? <laughs> <laughs> that is happening right now. Yeah. Because it's never happened before. I'm just like, I ain't scared of shit. I'm like, psh, psh, psh. I can't. <laughs> like protection i ain't fucking scared. i don't need no protection from nobody and now i'm like uh, yeah girl you got to protect yourself <laughs> um and so i'm learning it right now but it has a lot to do with my practices yeah it has a lot to do with what i do every day to cleanse my aura to clean yeah. my mind and to keep everything clear yeah one of the best tips I ever heard for empaths, and this is something that I do, is I take a bath every single day after I get home from seeing clients. And it sounds small, but this, there's something about submerging yourself in water that really, really does just like clear all, yeah. the, all the other energy that's not your own. Because the water, it's all about the water and the emotions and the sleep. And I a lot of things. A lot of Epsom salt. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. The buoyancy, mm -hmm. the, the ability to, yeah, cleanse. Absolutely. I love it. Yeah. And uh, I also stare at a candle because I do so much work now online. I'm typing yeah. on my iPad, I'm using my phone and I'm, mm -hmm. oh my God. Then all of a sudden you realize that social media is my job. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. I know. So <laughs> to cleanse all that out before yeah. bed for 20, 30 minutes, I stare at a candle. Amazing. And that's been something very, very recent that I'm like, you must do this mm. or you die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, that's a good tip. And the other thing that's really helpful to me is I just, the more I'm full like the more I fill myself up and I do things that like give me that like juicy, alive feeling, the less I'm, I'm not as absorbent of other people, of other yeah. people. Cause it's like, I'm overflowing. Oh, oh I love that. I love that. I'm spewing. So there's, there's no, in there's no way for it to come in, but I, I love it. I used, I work one-on-one -on -one with clients. I'm a massage therapist in addition to doing this. And so all day long, I'm with clients, like very much probably like you when you're tattooing people one-on-one -on -one yeah, in very close proximity. 
And so at the beginning, I've been doing it 12 years now, at the very beginning, I would be just completely wiped out from working with three clients. And now I'll see seven clients, eight clients. I'm like, I'm fine. I've got this. <laughs> yeah, that's so right. funny because it made me think of like, I've had a lot of um, amazingly powerful Reiki and massage therapists come through. And of course I'm like, yeah, yo, I want some work. You know, we exchange our gifts. And I've yeah. been told that my sacral chakra is just all over the place. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I love that. So do you do a lot of work um, online or, or do you mostly do in person? Obviously you can't choose tattoo somebody. Right, right. I want to, and I have in mind the idea is I can work with people on Zoom meetings like this. Yeah. Like, oh my God, we could meet every week and I could do cards. I could talk totally. about astrology, totally. you know, like it's, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's forming. It's, it's so close. It's like so tangible. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen like really fast. Yeah, totally. Yes. One day you're just going to be doing it. And how do you bring tarot into your work now? Oh, well, first they're right here right now. Ooh. You want to draw some cards? Of course. <laughs> of course, always. Um, the cards. So the interesting thing is I don't use normal tarot cards. See, these are just Oh, bicycle decks. What? Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. So the only thing that I'm reading is the numerology and the suits, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got dot. Wait, wait a sec. Yeah, there we go. Eight of diamonds. Eight of diamonds. Diamonds is earth, right? We got wands, which is fire. We've got hearts. Of course, hearts is water, emotions, yeah. um, and we've got swords. Okay. Air. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> I always have my cards on me. And anytime I need to, anytime I'm at a blank, like, oh God, I don't know what to say, you know? And, and my guides are telling me the more that, like, if I'm ever on like TED Talks or something, what do I say, right? <laughs> My cards are telling me that this is the way that I can continue. I can say what I need to say. So yeah. we've got yeah. 10 of wands. So the 10 is a completion. It is the world. It is everything. Okay. It is the swing. You know, it's one to talk about how everything is cyclical in this life and everything that we're experiencing in this life has been experienced before. Mm -hmm. It's like we, in today's time with, with all of the environmental stuff, it's easy to think, oh my God, doomsday. Like mm -hmm. um, it's never, it's, it's ending, it's ending, it's ending. They yeah. think of the end, yeah. but it's not. It's all happening cyclically, cyclically, right? Always has, right? Yes, always has. Yeah, and the fire wants to bring in the passion, mm -hmm. the prana. Mm -hmm. And I do work with sacred sexuality. I'm also a tantrika. I work with tantric energy. Yeah. Um, and that is... I mean, we've got the fire, right? We've got the passion, the yeah. uh, sacred heart, the flaming heart. Yep. All of our transmutations come from fire. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, you want to pull another one? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> what do we got? What do we got? We got, oh, a heart. Nine of hearts. So with the nine is like, we're almost there. Yeah. We're so close. We're so close to that 10, but these are our watery emotions. Mm -hmm. This is all talking about worshiping our water. Actually, I just saw a video um, on TikTok, which I'm really enjoying that portal. And I see you on that portal as well. And I'm like, yeah, we're rocking this TikTok. <laughs> and, <laughs> and 
really mastering your emotional response to everything and yeah. being able to handle your emotions, yeah. you know, because emotions can get out of control. Mm -hmm. If we um, don't allow them, I think that's when they cause the most problems. Like we have to let it, it's meant to move through us. It's not meant to be a to get stuck or be a permanent yes yes it's got to move from the nine to the ten to allow it to move yes yeah and resistance is what stops it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly 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 um let's do one more oh okay. the queen of swords has to come out she came out for you <laughs> what the about queen the queen of swords has like the the um high priestess energy right she is a queen she's the sacred feminine mm -hmm. and she is of the mind because she's of swords she has that sword mm -hmm. and she's sitting on her throne and she's like we got this we yeah. got this business women's entrepreneurship yeah. we got it <laughs> i love that so much this is cool. And I think it's really awesome because you're, you always have a deck of cards somewhere. Like you oh, can always, yeah, tarot cards. I mean, maybe you don't have your deck, but you could always sign a deck of cards. <laughs> you can go to your local gas station and get a pair of cards, a pack yeah. of cards. You can go like pretty much any grocery store has them. It's awesome. Yeah. It's very awesome. Well, what makes them powerful, and, and this is interesting that, that I haven't really heard this, and I put it in one of my, my TikTok videos, is that the only reason, the, the way that these work is through your energy. Yeah. Your light frequency vibration puts it into these cards, and then it's chance that just brings out which card needs to come out, yeah. and then it's your mind that, of course, interprets it. But yeah. so it's all energy. Just like everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> so you teach that we have the power to change our reality, which I believe as well. How do you help your clients utilize that ability? Well, I am a magician. Yeah. I'm not just like a, a health coach or a, um, a yoga teacher. I am a magician. So I have a magician's apprenticeship program where you can come and you can learn all of the tools and elements that a magician uses to change his reality yeah. um, and then create it for yourself. Yeah. It's like, hey, look, these are all the tools. We've got astrology, we've got tarot, we've got yeah. all of the divination stuff, pendulums. Yep. Um, my other favorite is scrying, to scry into like a crystal ball or something yeah. like that or fire. Yeah. Um, we've got, I mean, there's so many different practices, mm -hmm. um, sun worship ceremonies and yeah. creating our ceremonies and mm -hmm. through loving the elements and worshiping yeah. or paying attention to the elements, mm -hmm. you're able to, yeah, shift your, shift the world. And as collectively, the more we do this together, the more we can shift the global consciousness, which will change the world. That's just how it happens. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And I think, you know, the more tools, the better. And I think people find what they're, what works best for them and what's, you know, most comfortable. And yeah, that's really, that's such important work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say this too, because it's like a lot of people get, confused with these two words one is scary well they kind of scary one is the occult yes. and one is a cult yeah they're very different mm -hmm. a cult is like that you can't leave i'm the the ruler you know what mm -hmm. a cult is the occult is just the study of all of the tools that you can use to be your own magician. And what we do at Coma is we empower everybody to be their own. Well, your, your planet, the planets are your gurus, right? Like your inner higher self is your guru. 
Yeah. I read this book a long time ago. I've always been like, it was so funny because you were saying how you were always drawn to like the Native American culture, even as a child. Well, for me, it was like witches. I was obsessed with witches. <laughs> I want to like every <laughs> witch book, every witch movie. And, but I also have <laughs> really fundamentalist Christian. So, you know, those mm. two things are kind of opposed to a lot of people. But I read this book about this woman was a Christian and a witch. And her perspective was so interesting because she basically just breaks it down and she's like, paganism is just an honoring of the earth and the world that we live in that she believes like God created. And those two things don't go against each other. It's just an honoring of nature, which is a creation of the divine. So, mm -hmm. and I think that people, there's a huge difference between approaches and there is a dark side to everything there's a dark side to every tool every like dogmatic belief maybe you know we can we can use everything for good or for evil so i think it's all about the energy that you bring to it and absolutely yeah, it's a distinction that needs to be made between the occult and a cult and i love the way that you just framed that for us yes yes the occult is the study of the practices that if utilized in a bad way can become right. a cult. <laughs> but we've seen every religion utilized in a good way and a bad way. Absolutely. And I mean, the other thing that makes me want to mention is that I'm a non-dualist as well. Um, my Pluto and my son are in conjunction in Libra in the 11th house, mm -hmm. which is... I'm constantly balancing light and dark, which is why I say that I'm a light worker and I'm a shadow worker. Mm -hmm. And the deeper we go in the dark, the more prana and love that we have to have for each other. Cause you know, I think that's why a lot of us get into these relationships too, is because it's like toxic relationships take us deep. And we can only really, really go deep, deep, deep with somebody that is connected to us on a very deep level. Mm -hmm. um, so at Center of Mystic Arts, we, um, we have to be very open and secure with each other. Yeah. And if there's not that security, then you know, it's not the place for you. You know, I'm not, I don't have hundreds of people. Yeah. I mean, Coma kind of is talking about that maybe in the future, but I like small groups, yep. small groups. So we can go deep. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I feel that. Well, for you, it totally, a small group totally makes sense being an introvert. I'm the same way. I love yeah. a really small group or one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I think technology is a huge gift for introverts because you can have a one on one conversation like this and it's one on one, but then you get to share it with as many people as want to be there for it. So right. It's a very helpful tool and we don't have to leave our house. Yeah. <laughs> Where in my case, my <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> it's a wonderful gift. Um, so I would love to talk to you all day, but it has, I want to honor your time. Um, would you tell us how we can find you on the internet? Oh, I am working on my SEO, but I am everywhere. Okay. Um, Centerofmysticarts.com okay. is where you're going to find all of the links. Yeah. Um, but my hashtag is Mystic Eve. Perfect. On TikTok, it happens to be Mystic Eve 007. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, so yeah, my that's that's basically you're gonna be able to find me, and you know, I mean, I look like a crazy crone witch, so that's how you know it's me. <laughs> like a beautiful crazy crone witch. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I was gonna ask you because you were talking about non-dual, um, non-duality. If you'd read the book Existential Kink, I know it. I, I haven't read it yet. I think I have it downloaded. You gotta listen to it. Yeah, I loved that book. She is hilarious and yes. she's spot on, and it's so powerful. Some of the 
that's for me, there's always a place in my manifestation process where I have to look at my shadow and ask myself, why don't I want the thing that I want? <laughs> Mm, that's so good yes yeah. and she and in the book she always she says over and over again having is evidence of wanting so like it's just powerful it's a really really powerful spiritual tool to be able to look at yeah it Our just heart. came to me not too long ago you know it popped up on from mm -hmm. um have you heard of uh amber arrows no oh my god look her up on tiktok okay. she's okay. amazing and that's how i came up with this book and went ahead and downloaded it, but I hadn't got into it yet. So I'm yeah. excited. Her up. This has been such a fun conversation. Thank you so much, Eve. Thank I'm going to link your, um, I usually link Instagram. I'll link your Instagram and then you've got a link in your Instagram to your, for your website, right? Right. And that's the thing too, is like, I've got a coma Instagram, like coma has an Instagram, but oh. then my doing has an Instagram. I follow well. your personal Instagram, I think. Oh yeah. It's like Mystic Eve, I think. <laughs> all the all the Instagrams. Oh my God. I know. Are you on threads yet? <laughs> I don't even know about threads. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> it's just one more social media platform. <laughs> we can we can cover that next podcast. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and we should. We should definitely do this again because this is so much fun. Absolutely. I'll link, I'll put your uh, Instagram link so people can find you. And I'm so excited for everyone to hear this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Okay.